Well, hello there. I thought we'd sit in the garden today. We can have a run around and take lots of deep breaths of fresh air and see what the clouds are doing and listen to the ducks. And Giuseppe will probably walk past and yell at us. He's a goose. He does that kind of thing. Today's book is called Alva and Our Villa by Mary Lynn Ray with pictures by Barry Root. It's a lovely book and it's about a pair of old farmers and the wonderful holiday they take. Alva and our villa. Our villa was canning peaches when she got the idea. She filled the jars, put on the lids, and took them to the cellar, where she stored pickles and preserves for winter. Upstairs, she cleared the kitchen, made supper, and called Alva. The idea didn't go away. Look at all her marvellous jars of peaches. Out the window, the moon rose over the pasture. A small wind moved through the grass, the way she imagined waves moved across the ocean. Our villa wanted to go on a trip. She wanted to see the Pacific. The last time she and Alva had been away was the night they were married, 31 years before. Once a month they went to Franklin when the milk check came and some years our villa managed to day in Boston before Christmas to see the lights and do some shopping. But they never went on trips like their neighbours took. Trips they could send postcards from. Have you been on trips where you've sent postcards? <gasps> postcards are such fun to get. You can't have a farm and travel, Alva said. There were cows to milk, morning and night, and horses and hens and sheep to feed. I know that feeling very well. So for 31 years, our villa and Delva stayed home. And for 31 years, our villa imagined the ocean. Until suddenly, at supper, she turned to Alva and said, If it's the animals keeping us here, well, we'll take the animals with us. There they are, sitting in at their supper table. Alva kept eating his biscuit. He knew they couldn't do that, but our villa had it figured. Once in Boston, at the Arboretum, she saw a house built all of glass, where coconut trees and hyacinths grew inside in winter. She drew a picture for Alva, substituting cows, their cows, for tropical trees. Then she added wheels. And Alva, who was usually cautious of ideas, said, hmm, ah, yeah. The next day, he bought glass and putty and lumber, and he began to hammer. Every day he hammered. Soon he announced, rigs ready. Our villa admired what Alva had built. Her only disappointment was to call it a rig. She remembered something French she'd heard in the city and privately she called it their voiture. When she went to feed the chickens, she told them, your voiture is ready. They seemed unimpressed. Alva and our villa began to pack. They dismantled the bed in their bedroom, carried it out the door, and reassembled it in the glass car. Next, they brought a table, two chairs, two forks, two spoons, two knives, two plates, two cups, a skillet. Do you know what a skillet is? It's like a fry pan. A kettle and a stove. They packed clothes for cold days and clothes for warm days. There's our villa, 
getting all the clothes ready and Alva's carrying all the things in. They loaded beans, pickles, maple creams, popcorn, dried cod and apples, a barrel of northern spies and another of Roxbury russets. They brought jars of summer from the cellar, jams, jellies, vegetables, fruits. Alvilla's a very good cook. Hay for the cows and horses and sheep, dry corn for the hens and a box up front of useful things. A map, a bottle of ink, a pen and a roll of stamps. What do you think she's going to use those for? I think she'll use the map to find her way and then she'll make, use the stamp and the inks and the pen to write postcards. Then they loaded up their animals. Up the ramp came the cows. Betty, Blossom, Deer, Rose, Fleur, Ruth, Dora, Belle and Sweet. Then the sheep. Dahlia, Daisy, Moore, Juno, Jacqueline and Esther. Then the cats. Black, Snake, Wenatchee, Mississippi and Columbia. Then the dogs. Roger and Herb. And then the hens who being very plural, were unnamed. There they all are, ready to get on the voiture, or the greenhouse on wheels. Last of all, Alva brought the horses, Horace and Albert. There they are. And hitched them to pull. Our villa climbed onto the little front porch. Alva took the reins and when he called giddy up they rolled out of the yard after a while they came to a wide river horace stopped and looked around with a look that meant are we there yet our villa shook her head nope so they crossed the river and continued day after day our villa and Alva drove west, watching the land go flat. Along about Oklahoma, Albert looked around with a look that meant, Are we there yet? And our villa shook her head. No, they had to cross the prairie, so they kept on. All they saw was grass and sky, and then no grass. In a dry, dry place. Look how dry that is. Eh? Maud came forward and looked a look that meant, Are we there yet? And our villa shook her head. Nope. They had to cross the desert. So day after day they drove across sand until suddenly they saw mountains. Roger wagged his tail with a wag that meant, oh, are we there yet? Our villa shook her head. No, they had to cross the mountains. So up, 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 they went. And then down, 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 down. Then our villa saw it. The land came to a wet, sudden end. Waves. Sand, palms that looked like pineapples, ocean, the Pacific Ocean. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? What a long way they've travelled. As soon as the horses stopped, they all got out and looked. And when they recovered from their shyness, they waded into the water. Mmm, ah, yeah, said Elva. Look at that cow there, will you? Having a surf. Have you ever seen a cow have a surf? I haven't. That night they ate avocados and oranges. And the next day, observing local custom, they all lay on the beach while our villa wrote postcards. Days came and went like lazy tides. But after a while, the cows began to fidget. The sheep began to fidget. 
Alva began to fidget, and Avila had used up all her stamps. They'd seen what they'd come to see. It was time for Betty, Blossom, Dear, Rose, Fleur, Ruth, Dora, Belle, Sweet, Dahlia, Daisy, Moore, Juno, Jackal, and Esther, Black, Snake, <gasps> Wenatchee, Mississippi, Columbia, Roger, Herb, Horace, Albert, Avila, and the flutter of hens to go home. Back up the mountains and down, back over the desert and prairie, back across the rivers, little and big. Day after day they drove east until they saw their hills return. And on the last hill was their farm. Alva unhitched the horses. Our villa led the cows and sheep to pasture. The chickens scuttled everywhere. The cats went to examine the barn and the dogs nosed around the yard. <laughs> Our villa and Alva unpacked. They took their bed back to their bedroom and put the table and chairs in the kitchen. They returned the cups, the plates, the silver, the kettle, the skillet, the stove. They hung their clothes in their closets. But no food was left, only empty jars to store in the cellar. It was time to begin the garden. The next day, Alva parked the glass car in the bright spring sun and removed the wheels. Then he covered half the floor with flats for seedlings and planted a start on summer. Tomatoes, lettuce, squash. The other half he offered to our villa to set up her geraniums. But our villa had other ideas. There's our villa having a look at her glass house and pondering what she's going to do. She opened the apple barrels they'd emptied going west. She had filled them with sand from the Pacific, which she swept across the floor to make a little beach. And here, she and Alva, and sometimes a cow or a cat or a dog, lie and they remember the ocean. Mmm, ah ya, yeah, says Alva. Ah ya. Yeah. There they are. Look how happy they are and what wonderful memories they must have of their holiday. The end. Now get up, stretch your legs and have another run around, okay? Off you go.